time since we had a Winnebago update, so we're gonna head over to the shop right now and show you guys how the project is coming along. Morning. That's uh that's Florida in a can. <laughs> 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 yeah, I didn't drive the, the truck. I drove the bus this morning, so. No, it actually has got down to like 30 something degrees, which. Yeah, uh, around. Which yeah, is cold for Florida. Really cold. It's <laughs> <laughs> alright. Keep moving. I got jogging pants under here, <laughs> three jackets on. <laughs> Whatever it takes. So today I'm actually wearing pants. <laughs> I mean, I always wear shorts or right. something, but right. <laughs> from where it, where the snowmen live, though. So the reason why it's been so long since we've done an update is because really Ryan's in a part of this build where it's just very difficult and it's taking a long time. The steering, you know, we I think we touched upon this a few videos ago, which is months and months ago, yes. is the hardest part of this whole build. Absolutely. So. Spend more time on the steering than the rest of it altogether. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And my brain hurts. <laughs> yeah. So if you've been following along on uh, Ryan's Facebook page, he's posted up pictures and stuff. But we'll get you some video today and kind of just show you where he's at right now. And it's getting close to sitting this thing on the ground again and actually driving it. So, yes. so where are we at? What, what have we done? Well, we've got idler arms made. These pieces down in here are actually trailer bearings and the little hubs that where the wheels would attach in on all that. So actually I made that part and made that part, but uh, the, inside that tube has got the, the tapered bearings so that there's zero slop in these pieces as they uh, they go up and down or side to side. And they can never get loose. So like most idle arms can wiggle up and down and that's just put slop in the steering. And I didn't want that. So did that the other end, I put bronze bushings in both pieces in the center link that I made and uh, the end, other end of this, so the center link can't twist like a regular center link can too. So we got no play there, but just trying to figure out where to put all of those parts and the geometry of the way it swings to get the Ackerman correct and get no toe. It was really, really, really difficult. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's spot on now. I got 15 and a half inches, no bumps here at all. Right, and so the reason why all this, all this fancy, crazy stuff is because this thing is gonna sit on the ground, as you know, it's hard to see here, but to be able to get the steering to work, you kind of had to move everything out of the way of the suspension. And the frame. And, and the frame, <laughs> and the motor. And the motor. <laughs> Even had to get a different oil pan just to make that happen. Yeah, it's uh, tape, it's taped this. together. I don't mean, come on. <laughs> I know you can weld. <laughs> the tape works well. Yeah, so you had to notch the steering, or not the steering, the steering had to be notched. No. What had to be notched? The, the oil, oil pan. pan had to be notched. <laughs> more. More. It was already kind of notched. I had to notch it slightly more. Right. I just have a little bit more to notch. <laughs> just, just to clear. And uh, one thing nice about this, you know, if you've ever driven an old RV, they are not fun. They're just all over the road. Yes. And I, I had a, another one, and it was horrible to drive on the road. And I'm not gonna have this one to be like that. This thing is gonna drive like a car. Yeah, that thing moves like butter. I mean, look at that. And, you know, actually, you know, I've always heard of what Ackerman is, but I never really knew until you did this build. So I kind of understand it now. Right. But on driving down the road or even like race cars and stuff, yeah, it's got it, to be dead on. It, it needs or close. To be, it needs to be at least close. So, and to get it to be close, I mean, I learned a lot. I thought I knew about it, but I, I knew nothing about it. <laughs> but I watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos here. That's how you do it. You watch That's how videos. you do it. You watch the watch YouTube videos and you'll figure this stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh I uh I mean nothing really with a steering box. Everybody's using rack and pinions and I couldn't fit a rack and pinion in here because the pivots would have been too far out and get enough steering, so I had to do it with the steering box, which I really don't like steering boxes, but the only play I'll have will be the steering box. That's it. Everything else is brand new, super tight, won't have no issues. 
and it's it's an awesome, awesome job. This is a center link before I made the other one. This is just mock up, but that kind of puts everything in the right spot, and I was able to cut it. And I know you think, wow, that's got to hold, right? <laughs> you could have just ran it. This is extremely temporary. <laughs> So, just just to get your positions in place. Yeah, the, even like the height and how far back it was going, and to get that, like I said, like moving in an eighth of an inch really changes a lot of everything. So, yep, that's perfect. I mean, Ackerman is not something you adjust ever. It's not like it's an alignment thing that you adjust out. You, it's built into the suspension and it's done. That's why people don't even really know about it. But the t bump steer or the toe, that's that's done, you know, by moving the, this side up and down and this side up and down, getting everything just right and the length of the tie rod. Right, and we were just talking off camera that just just even adjusting uh, the tie rod length up and down, maybe an eighth of an inch, can make a huge difference in the sweep of the or the, the cycle arc. of the suspension. Yeah. Right, and you could adjust that out with a simple little yeah. shim, basically a that's washer too. That's one of the things that just took so long was changing that over and over, moving that that eighth of an inch just to see. And then even the length of the tie rod will affect that because that's how much it arcs, and you want it to, the arc to match the arc of the the A arms, which. The only good thing for me is I have equal length A arms, so my spindle is actually going to stay straight. The camera's not going to turn. If you have unequal length A arms, like your razor more than likely has, when it comes up, the tire's going to lean in. But that also moves the steering arm in at a separate angle. So now you got three angles going on that you have to try to nail, which yeah. is, is, is without doing it in a computer. So and doing all this crazy work here with the crazy welds and just tacking it together gets you as close as you can possibly get. Then when you get it on the car, or the Winnebago in this case, you can adjust it, fine tune it, fine -tune and get it, yeah. it perfect. Yeah. So. It's like even this, like that part there used to come straight out here and actually was straight out further. further. This hole, this was, that's outboard. This hole, this is, that's the front of it. This hole was further that way as well. I moved it as far out as I could and I had to move it down that much. We added all this metal in here and actually looked pretty good. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with the way that came out. <laughs> out on hold. But, uh, <laughs> that was to get the bump steer and the Ackerman as good as I can get it. So I'm so, super happy with it because it's perfect. <laughs> and also you, you look like Cornholio. Just, I am Cornholio. <laughs> it TV for my bunghole. <laughs> Just the way the, the idler arms arc is, is how I got the Ackerman to work. I had to push everything way far back. That's why this pivot, if you look in the back there, you can see this thing goes back. It was to push the tie rods further back so the tie rods are actually angled when it's straight. And when you turn, the uh, tie rods get to more straight. Actually, they, they're perfectly straight when you turn all the way. And that makes the tie rods longer when it's turned and shorter when it's straight. And that's how I was able to get the Ackerman to, to function yeah. the way so, it needed to. So in a, in a dumbed down version, the... <laughs> For the Ackerman, the outside tire and the inside tire have to turn at different angles uh, because, you know, an out, the outside tire is the bigger. Just picture two motorcycles driving in a circle. The inside guy is going to have to turn more than the outside guy if they're both next to each other like that. And your all cars just do that. It's automatic. It's built into the geometry when they build it. So since I had to build it, I had to build that into it as well. Yep. It's just crazy to think that that's going to work, but it's going to drive better than any normal RV, which, Definitely. like I said earlier, if you've <laughs> ever driven an old RV, you had an old RV, it's oh, it's a white knuckle experience. I don't even time. know where they get the term white knuckle from, but <laughs> no, that's what they call it. Your hands will be, in, like my stomach hurt driving that thing in more than five hours. You were absolutely done. Yep. And this ain't going to be like that. So I'm driving it to SEMA. I don't know. Wherever the hell I want to drive it, I'm driving it. You'll drive it. You'll drive it to Moab just to pick up a bicycle because it's a good deal. I know you. That's true. I saved a hundred bucks. <laughs> so what else? Since the last time we've done a video, uh, I mean, I know it's mostly steering, but what else? I see a couple tubes in here. It's bracing now because I had to notch the frame a lot, which is still not done. But I actually boxed on top of the the frame there. There's a gusset going up to the cylinder mount. So I boxed that all in, and now I still have to box underneath, but I have to get the tie rod sleeves made, which I don't have everything, as I've been contemplating how I want to make them. I have some ideas, and i got to order some parts next week for that. 
but right now I'm actually making tubes to go from the, the front of the frame to the upper of the cylinder mount, which would just help box everything in, being like I did have to notch a lot of the frame, like most of the frame out up in the front there. So being I boxed over top of it, and now it's got, it's just spreading the load of the frame. So it's gonna be a, a lot stronger this way. Plus I can attach the radiator and everything, because I kind of want to keep the radiator up in here above all this stuff. It's obviously, this isn't the, set, uh, the drag link, but. Yeah, that's the next question. Where's the radiator gonna go? <laughs> the radiator's gonna be in, here, <laughs> that area. It looks like it's gonna have to be on some sort of an angle. I'll probably bend a radiator in half and <laughs> you know I do things. You actually did that on a car where he welded two radiators together at what about thirty degree angle or something like that. Yeah. What was a, it was a Impala. Impala. But whatever, was, whatever angle those grills are. Yeah, exactly. He went from headlights to headlights and it fit and it was pushed all the way up in the grill because it had giant turbos up in the front like that. <laughs> they were huge. <laughs> yeah. But it worked. We so, could do something like that. Or I've, I've, I've seen guys put radiators underneath the car. I'm just... <laughs> Done that. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's options. Yeah, we have plenty of options. All right, is there anything on the inside? Anything else that's different? Are we? Is this just it? It's been steering. It's, it's been killing me, honestly. It's, it's been probably, what, four or five months of steering? Yeah. For real. <laughs> Since not... I set it on the ground, I mean, we got the engine set in there and made the mounts for all that. So that I can make the steering, but once I got to the steering, man, things just turned to a crawl because I would lay underneath of it for hours, staring at it, trying to figure out what to do. Yeah, and the yeah, like you said, the it, it, the engine now is a Hemi. So there she is, the Hemi. Oh yeah, balls to the walls. Turbo supercharger? No, it's three hundred forty something horsepower right That's, there. Come on. That's plenty of horsepower. Yeah, he'll say that now. Then a week of driving, he's like, I need more power. No. <laughs> We're jumping out of 50 horsepower to 350 horsepower. I'll be good. <laughs> come on. Come on. More power is always good. Well, anybody's got a Hellcat engine they want to donate? Yeah, Hellcat, Hellcat is the way to go. I would, uh, 700 is good. 700 would be... <laughs> we'll make it fit. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. You'd be able to put the Hellcat logo like right, right here. Uh, no. It'd be giant. Oh, <laughs> the, 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 whole whole the whole side. <laughs> that thing got a Hemi. <laughs> so, oh yeah. Well, I tell you, to be honest, I've kind of missed doing the Winnebago stuff. It's been boring and long. <laughs> boring and long. <laughs> Sorry. But if there's more progress, we will definitely uh, update you and keep this project going. It's getting close. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hopefully, we'll do a SEMA ride. That would be so awesome. Let's go. <laughs> I'll fly there and meet you. I'll, I'll, meet, I'll meet you in Phoenix. That'd be all right. I'll pick you up at the airport. <laughs> yeah. All right, get back to work. All right. What is this? <laughs> I don't know. It's a snowman. <laughs> snowman. It's a Florida snowman. It's a Florida fab man. That there's art. <laughs> Doesn't look like art. <laughs> yeah. A little packed in here. There's a couple of Volkswagens. Here's one. There's one. There's one. There's one. <laughs> There's another oh, wait. one. Over it, wait. There's another one. There's a okay. couple more this way. One there. <laughs> there. Buried yeah. back in there. This one? Oh, this yeah. one's been on the channel. Yeah, it's a really nice one, too. Yeah. Very nice. And this is the five thousand dollar Arbor Press that everybody bitches about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that you paid how much? Free. <laughs>